Yesterday in church, we lit the second Advent candle. As with most churches, we call it the candle of peace. This week, I want to reflect on the nature of peace, what it is, what it isn't, and how very different the coming of God's peace will make our world. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Monday, December 5th, 2022. Yesterday's reading from Isaiah is a great way to enter into our discussion of peace. That's because when we talk about peace in the Bible, it's not exactly the same thing as what we talk about in everyday life, in everyday conversation. Peace in the Bible is not so much about the absence of war as it is the full coming of God's kingdom into the world. Oh, peace as the absence of war is certainly part of it, but it is by no means the whole thing. So when we talk about peace as the Bible talks about it, we need to stretch our thoughts and our imaginations just a little bit. That's why this passage from Isaiah is so apt. It provides us with a vision that stretches the very bounds of our imagination. The prophet says, A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. What an astounding vision! As I said in yesterday's sermon, it signals the coming of a kingdom that is literally unimaginable. We simply have no experience, save for the occasional glimpses of what God's kingdom will be like. We know it won't be business as usual. Things will change. And the only way to begin imagining that change is to describe change in the nature of, well, nature itself. You see, in our world, wolves eat lambs. It's in their nature. Leopards eat goats. Lions eat calves. Bears maul cattle, and snakes bite. It's all in their nature, and we almost cannot imagine it any other way than that. That's what makes Isaiah's vision so compelling. It reminds us that the coming of God's kingdom of peace brings more than a cessation of hostilities between nations. It brings a change in the fabric of the world as we have come to know it. Now, it's not that we don't know anything about this coming kingdom. We have plenty of clues throughout Scripture, if we will bother to see them for what they are. So the rest of this week, we'll pick up and examine some of those clues. But it is enough for us today just to know that the peace of God's kingdom changes everything. Literally everything. But for now, May God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.